take the body and the blood of Christ. Take semicolon. The body and the blood of Christ. So love my Savior, sanctify my breast, body of Christ be thy my saving guest, blood of my Savior. Bath me in thy side, wash me with water, flowing from thy side. Take the body and the blood of Christ. In our everyday interaction, we used to hear the word take. I want you to take. I want you to take this thing. I want to take, I want you to take. At least when you are with somebody in the family, in any situation, you must have said this word. Verb, take, once a day. Some people will say it twice. Others will say it thrice, depending or according to your situation, daily situation. Take. And the take Jesus used in the gospel today is not a singular. It is not a singular verb. Like all the languages that have their root or their foundation from learning, they differentiate between take as a singular and take as plural. So in English, if I want to say to somebody, take, it is take. If I want to tell to all of you in the church, take, it is take. So you might differentiate it from you in plural and you in singular. One person, two persons. But Christ in the gospel, take. Plural, addressing the disciples. Anchipite, prendete. And whenever we hear take, two questions will come to our mind. One, what are we taking? Two, why? Are we taking it? One, what are we taking? Two, why are we taking it? What are we taking? The body and the blood of Christ. And that situates the solemnity of today the holy body and the blood of Christ. The greatest gift to humanity, a parting gift to humanity. Recall, Jesus started preparing the people for this wonderful gift. In John chapter six, Verse 35, he said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will not hunger. 
and whoever believes in me will not thirst. Recall also, because of this teaching, Jesus, or the many disciples of Jesus, deserted him. Because they started asking, are we going to eat your body? Are we going to drink your blood? We are not cannibals. And many people left. And when Jesus seen other people, he said, are you still with me? Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the message of eternal life. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the message of eternal life. The first question having been answered, that is, what are we taking? We're going to answer, why do we take? Why do we take? The greatest gift to humanity, the parting gift to humanity. Jesus, when he was about to leave, he was conscious of us. He thought of us. He said, I will not leave you like orphan. He touched the body and blood of Christ, said, take. The body and blood of Christ that will sustain you and me, that will strengthen you and me, that will heal you and me, that will accompany me and you. In the first reading, the figure of the blood of the Lamb. The altar, the killing of the bulls and goats. Moses used it as a sign of the covenant for shadowing what Christ is going to do for you and for me on the cross. But the blood of the bulls, the blood of the goats, are not the ultimate sacrifice. That brings us to the second reading. The ultimate sacrifice is the blood of Christ. The blood of the new covenant. Jesus had given to you and have given to me. What fortunate people are we to have this sacrament? Because during the celebration of the Eucharist, on the altar, two things happen. One, transubstantiation. What is substantiation? Transubstantiation. The bread and the wine are the symbols. And whenever the priest, according to the word of God in the gospel, say, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. Automatically, it becomes the body and the blood of Christ. What a wonderful miracle. Again, what differentiates the Catholic Church from other our brethren who use the Eucharist also is that it is not only on the altar as far as the priest has said, this is my body, 
this is my blood, the consecration, during consecration, after that, they remain the body and blood of Christ. It's not after the altar everything we finish, no. That is why we have the chapel of adoration. What will be our reaction to take the body and blood of Christ? One is worship, two is reverence, and three is, one is worship, two is reverence, and three is respect. The body and blood of Christ Do you believe? Do I believe? It's not a question of saying I believe, but there are outward signs that we show that what we receive here is the body and blood of Christ. It's not only to say it's the body and blood of Christ. We are, or when I treat it with carelessness, disrespectful, Worship, adoration, and respect. Worship, adoration, and reverence. How do we receive the Holy Communion? Recall, in your faith formation, you were told two preparations material and spiritual preparation. Material preparation, you have to fast one hour before receiving the Holy Communion. Have you forgotten it? Do you still do that? Number two, spiritual preparation. I must be in the state of grace to receive Holy Communion. You must be. It's not when others are coming out, you come out, no. You have to look inward. If you are not worthy, nobody is forcing you to come out. But when you have looked inward and you see that you are worthy, you don't get up because your wife is getting up, no. You don't get up because your husband is getting up. No, everybody has to look inside his conscience. Thomas Aquinas said, two people came to receive. One received life, another received death. Spiritual death. When we come out to receive Holy Communion, as I said before, it is your character, it is your respect that we show that what you are receiving is the body and blood of Christ. You are not in a restaurant, no. The body and blood soul and divinity of Christ, essentially, holy and substantially. Today is another day. We look inward and see how we treat this sacrament. When you, want, when you want to receive Holy Communion, we were instructed when I was young that when you come out, if you want to receive on the tongue, if you want to receive on your palms, you use your left palm, place it on your right, so that when the priest say, the body of Christ, this is 
another significant teaching. When you say amen, you assent that what you are giving is the body and blood of Christ. You don't need to remain silent. You must assent. The body of Christ, amen. Now you use your right hand to take the body of Christ. And you have to consume it. I have to come out for this one. Because I was in a parish where somebody received the Holy Communion and he put it inside the wallet. <laughs> Sacrilege. We don't need to laugh. Sacrilege. You are not going to consume it at the back of the church, no, neither in your car. The body of Christ, amen. You don't take it to your seat. Many people had come to church. They take the Holy Communion and they take the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, for sacrilegious actions, and they were caught. If you know you don't want to receive, nobody is forcing you to come and receive. Be on your chair. Don't take the body of Christ to put it in your pocket. Disrespectful. You take it, you consume. And the reverence. Today is another day. When we ask ourselves, how do we treat this sacrament? It's not ordinary bread. Do you still believe? Because it comes from your belief. When you don't believe, you treat it with triviality. Spiritual preparation, material preparation. St. Thomas Aquinas called this banquet a precious and a wonderful banquet. He composed many hymns of the Holy Eucharist. He was a theologian, he was a philosopher. After all the hymns, he said, Adorate devote, to you I kneel and bow before you in the blessed sacrament, reverence. You are not at the same age with Christ. Neither that Christ is your age mate. It demands respect. It demands reverence. It demands worship. If you still believe that what you are receiving is the body and blood of Christ. St. Thomas Aquinas, after all the composition, say, I bow before. Do you still bow? Do you still genuflate? You treat it casually. It is not a casual sacrament. The Holy Eucharist is the nucleus of our Christian faith. Take the body and blood of Christ.